No, we are actually going... <laughs> We're back with our series, How to Leave on Time and Never Take Papers Home Again. And we're going to be talking about grading for accuracy versus completeness? Effort. Effort. Whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Yeah, grading for effort versus accuracy. There you or go. versus competency, maybe you want. Um, but we can do both of those in competency. I don't know, that's the conversation. There you go. So you figure out what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> you make it up. Okay. So how does this fit into the overall topic of how to leave on time and never take papers home again? Um, I have just noticed for myself and for every teacher I think I've ever met, um, they we all complain, maybe not all of us, but so many of us complain at how long it takes to grade. Mm -hmm. And we say that the most when we are grading every question right or wrong. Mm -hmm. So if the goal is to not take papers home, one of the things we must consider is, is it necessary for us to grade every question as right or wrong? Us. Maybe there's another solution. Like hiring someone else to grade your paper. Yes. As some of you are already having your spouse do it and your kids do it. Like, I know you're already having other people grade I it. I had you're my okay mom with it. help me. Your mom, grandma. <laughs> Did you ever hire a VA in India? Anybody? A virtual assistant? Nobody's How would they hired... do that? You... Yeah, that'd probably take me. <laughs> Never mind. But we do. We ask other people to grade it. And so, what if we had, like, that's a solution. Like, we got to come up with that, a solution for that. So. It takes too long to grade every question right now. So, one of the ideals behind it, though, is, okay, so homework. Homework, well... I could even go with a conversation on whether we should have homework or not. That's a different video. It's a different topic. <laughs> but, so if you have homework. Although, can I just say right there, if you didn't have homework, you would have less to grade at home. Hey, True, right? Yeah. So maybe in this conversation <laughs> is how much homework should we, do we need to assign? We're not going to get totally into the solution to that today because it may save us grading time at home. Okay, but you were saying I kind of forgot what I was saying oh, so uh, nah. my fault. Uh, you were talking about homework and <laughs> oh, grading. homework. Oh, okay so some people grade each answer correct and they sit there and they do it themselves at home while watching TV or whatever it is um, and then there's other people that grade it for just completeness like whether it was done or not which is what I ended up doing just Me because too. I could not grade at all. And then there are other times when it just ended up in the circular file, which we could mention later, but I just, it was too much and was too overwhelming and got to the point where it was kind of embarrassing that it had taken me that long to get to it. So I just tossed it and gave them credit for like, yay, you turned it in. Everybody got credit because they're a student. Hey. Yay. We give yay hands. <laughs> yay. No, that doesn't even seem right. But there were some that just got got thrown away. Yeah. So we want to go into that conversation of <laughs> how do you decide? Do you ever decide to just grade for completion? Do you feel like that's ethically wrong? The student works so hard on it, they deserve for me to tell them if it's right or wrong. Um, I do think that every student should know if they did well or not like what areas they have to improve or what areas they have competency in but here here's the thing that i've learned is just because a kid got an answer right doesn't mean they understand it right so just be like when they when they get homework at home and we, we grade it like nine out of ten you know then they get a nine out of ten but they did really like so are we trying to have them spend more time doing homework so they make sure they get every answer right are we trying to not encourage but like accidentally encourage them to compare answers you know with other students like i i as a teacher value when they bring their independent practice if they had homework i call it independent practice for myself because they practice it independently i want them to be able to see as like a mini assessment for themselves how mm -hmm. much they understood it and if they spent 
more time than other students on it. That's not totally independent. That's not totally a fair assessment with everybody else. If they then like felt like they did terrible on it and went out at the picnic tables and compared answers and changed their own answers, that's not a fair assessment for them of what they understand. Like the point of practice is so that we can see what they understand or not so that they can practice better again. So how do you see what they understand if you're not correcting each one? How well, I didn't say it? each one doesn't get corrected. I just said I don't correct each one. Oh. Yeah. So, oh. Uh, so what do I do? I, I eventually went and made these stamps right here. Uh, one says good practice because I wanted students to, to know my theory behind it, that it's practice. And one says on time. And really the purpose for both of them, sometimes I just want to have a mark on it saying that it was on time. I don't want to say late. I want to give them the credit for it being on time. Like I want to leave positive messages. If it doesn't say on time, then it was late. And they know that. They want an on time stamp, not a not to avoid a late stamp. It's a difference in, in positivity and negativity. So good practice. Um, this way they know they practiced it all well. Um, and so, so those are my tools. You can call them whatever they, whatever you want. And so what would I do? Like, let, let's say last night there was homework, mm -hmm. right? And students had 10 grammar questions on commas. Uh, maybe it was a comma grammar ninja thing that they had to do. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and they brought them in at the very beginning of class, even before classes has started, I will say, pass your page from grammar ninja up to the front and they'll all be at the front of their row and I will go around with the on time stamp or the good practice stamp, whatever I want. Um, and I will right there at the front of the row so I don't have to walk all the way around the classroom. I'll just go and I'll look and see how far they got done. And I'll have a different color pen too so I can maybe sometimes circle the ones they didn't do. Mm -hmm. But but I just at the end started, like if they didn't have it all done, they didn't have practice done on time. And so to get an on time stamp, they had to practice every question. Mm -hmm. And so if it was all done, ching, and then I just go ching, 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 and don't do the ones that weren't. And then I pass them back that row, do all the rows. It takes about a minute. And I can even be talking to them about what we're doing in class today while I grade it. And then they pass them all back and then we're ready to grade it. Like then they, they already, it's already been assessed. Like, was it on time? I already marked it, right? Was it on time or not? And now they have complete freedom to change their answers. Like to cross what? it, to cross it out. This one was wrong. Here was my thought why it was wrong. And we just spend time with, like, we'll grade it. And then I'll explain the answer, ask them why they put what they want. And they can feel free to change it because they've already got full credit. Like, they've, they've shown their work. It doesn't matter. Like, they're, they're so focused on getting points for the right answers that they've stopped focusing on the learning. And once we get that out of the way, now we can focus on the learning. And I save myself grading time, right? It's a win-win all the way across, I think. There you go. Is that it? Um, what, about, <laughs> what about the times we do need to grade for accuracy? Oh, when so yeah, when, when do you do that? So yeah. it's, the, it's the actual assessment time. You're not doing that for a test because that's not the practice. That is... Yeah, these are the, the practice assessment. times so, all during it. So we're talking about when it is the independent practice things in class. So say you've done a lesson, you did the your whole little lesson plan, and then you get to the independent practice and they're practicing it. That is the practice. It's not yet the assessment. And so when it comes to the assessment, then how would you do that? I, my school had a really great Scantron system that, uh, I forget what it was called, um, but yeah, it was a Scantron, and I literally would hold it up to my webcam, and it would grade it in what? two seconds. Or I'd put a little basket on my desk and point the webcam down and just drop it in the basket like this, literally this fast. Ching, 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 and, and then, it would grade, and then it would put it all in, and I would find out like which questions they all had the hardest time on, or I just have the student grade. I'd set the webcam up and they come up and put it under, they love doing it. And then I never even graded. I'm working on some other stuff or like checking other students um, while they do the grading. And what? It was a webcam? I did not know it was a webcam. Yeah. That's amazeballs. Yeah, just drop it in a basket, you know? Like one of these kind of little baskets right here. And I just drop the papers in and the webcam goes, great, great, great. It was, it was amazing. If your school doesn't have one, you should talk to them about getting them. They save so much wow. time yeah and so but you know then it's like right or wrong 
It's those mm -hmm. kinds of questions. And so, um, but those, like, then you get into short answer questions and then you actually have to grade those. So the goal then is when you have to grade right or wrong on questions, you need to have saved yourself so much time in other areas that mm -hmm. you can then use that time to grade right or wrong on the ones that actually need to be graded right or wrong mm -hmm. instead of just sucking up all of our time grading everything right or wrong. Yeah. Like us grading it. Like students can grade it and you take away all of that. There you go. Yeah. If we have, uh, we, <laughs> we want to know how you do it. Like, do you feel really strongly about grading everyone accurately like you've got to do it because maybe there's a trust issue with students or mm. or what um, we want to know all of the details about your different nuances so put the comments down there and let's talk about them we even kind of we really like to dive into like the i guess like the philosophy behind the grading of it yeah so because we're here to learn too and so let's all learn together throw your comments down there and let's talk um and explore this whole thing and in the meantime uh, keep on being awesome <laughs>